Greetings everyone and welcome back to 365 Days of Prague. Today we're going to be reviewing Piccio del Pozo by the band Piccio del Pozo. Hi, my name's Naomi. I'm an avid progressive rock fan, but I'm a long ways from knowing all the Prague albums out there. But this year, I'm going to give it a try. This is 365 Days of Prague. You know, Italian is one of those languages which I always think I know how to correctly pronounce, but I'm probably just butchering everything. I'm saying Piccio del Pozo, and it might actually be more something like Piccio del Pozo, or some... I, I've, I've no fucking clue. Basically, that's what I'm saying. Anyway, enjoy some of my favorite bits from this album. So the band Piccio del Pozo formed back in 1976 and they quickly disbanded in 1980 before re-establishing in 2002. And these are a very interesting group of people because they make one of the very few Italian prog bands to ever be influenced directly from the Canterbury scene. Unheard of? I know. And this outlandish source of influence led to the creation of one of the most interesting Italian prog albums I've ever heard. This one, although always being on the cusp of still sounding like your usual Italian prog album, is just quite far enough to stray away from it and also feature something which is entirely unheard of. Now much like its Canterbury influences, this album is laden with flutes and what I would assume to be piccolos as well as a bunch of quirkily played brass instruments. There are also some guitars, some keyboards, and a good amount of vocals, although just a scarce amount of them are actually lyrics. Now, as a whole, this album is, as I said, quite quirky, it is fairly goofy, and very odd in its nature. Now, if I had to review this entire album in one word, I'd actually go ahead and say, why? Now, I don't fancy myself a one-word review, so I'm gonna elaborate just a bit. So, I think in order to get my point across about what I feel and think of this album, I'll have to use some comparisons, and the two comparisons I'm gonna use are actually albums which we've reviewed on this series, this album being the debut by Albert Marcourt and Uncle Mate by Frank Zappa. Now, the reason I chose these two albums in particular is because mainly of one reason, and that is that both of them, or the three of them that I'm talking about, are kind of, well, they're weird. Now, the two aforementioned albums that I noted are albums which I particularly really like. I might not think that they're perfect, but inherently I do enjoy listening to them. While this album today, Piccio del Pozo, is not one that I liked too much. Now, why is that? Why, if all of them are weird, do I like more of them more and more of them less? Well, the reasoning for it is what makes them great in the first place. Well, you see, in the case of Albert Marcourt's debut album, you do have an album which is absurdly weird. It is very odd, very quirky, filled with a lot of things which aren't at all very contemporary when making music, yet it still sounds good. And my reasoning for it would be that this album exhibits just a very high level of sheer craftsmanship. Now, what I really love about that is despite on its surface seeming like a very, you know, weird album for the sake of being weird, when you actually dive into it, you see that everything is planned out, there's a certain harmony and balance throughout this entire album, and that inherently quite makes it enjoyable, at least for me, and maybe not for others. But with the case of Uncle Meat by Frank Zappa, we really can't say the same as the latter, because this one, well, it's filled with, you know, improvisation, and outtakes, and sections from live shows, it isn't meticulously crafted. But this is inherently what's also really, really good about Uncle Meat. The fact that, well, it's personal. There's a lot of things which you see into the minds of the people making this, especially, of course, Frank Zappa himself. You do have a group of very talented people performing otherworldly music, but in a way you do also get to see just a part of who they really are, a part of their quirkiness, their music, their fun sections, everything that has to do with that, and it does feel like a very personal experience. 
But in the case of Picciotto del Pozzo, well, it doesn't really answer the two categories I've just established. As a whole, this album really does little in order to explore complex, interesting, and intricate melodies and rhythm sections, while at the same time, it doesn't really get personal at all. And I just remember sitting there listening to this album and thinking to myself, why would anyone make this type of album? This one, it's basically meaningless. And no, it's not like I'm seeking any conceptual narrative on here making this one into a concept album, none at all, I don't really think that's very important, but I do believe that each and every album ever existed has to have at least a reason for being created in the first place, which is something which I really failed to find on this one. There were a few parts on this album which I particularly enjoyed, especially the first and the last tracks which were pretty nice, but all in all I just sat there pretty indifferently listening to this music, not entirely suffering, but at the same time just being very disinterested in anything that's going on. Now I know that a lot of you in the comments are gonna say that this album is one that you actually quite like and you don't understand why I don't really like it that much, but that I am entitled to my own opinion, so yeah, this is basically this case. Maybe this album has a lot of things going for it, but honestly, I really couldn't find any of that. And in the realm of Italian prog, this one definitely doesn't go to represent what Italian prog usually sounds like, and saying that this one doesn't even have a lot of lyrics to be found on it, I wouldn't be surprised to actually assume that this one came from a whole different region in the world. But did this album have the potential to become something good? Well, it did. There were many points on this album which I thought to myself, oh yes, this is gonna get interesting, this is a build-up, this is something that's leading to something which I'm definitely going to like, and then it promptly didn't. But I will note as my closing statement that maybe this band still has some point of redemption within me. I don't think that the 4.11 rating that this album has on the prog archives is quite justified, but that's just my own opinion, which I'm entitled to. But, you know, maybe the albums they created after the re-establishment in 2002 might actually be better, and I've seen a lot of people commenting on them saying that they are actually really good pieces of music, so you know what, I might as well go ahead and try to listen to those. But, as it sounds right now, this is just an album I'm mostly indifferent towards, and, you know, that's about it. Let's talk about the cover. This cover is a pretty neat cover and it's not something I would normally expect to see in a 1970s cover. And as a prog cover, this is definitely not something I was expecting at all. This one has the feeling of something you'd find on an IKEA print or something like that, maybe a children's notebook, but this very interesting aesthetic is actually quite fitting on here and definitely quite refreshing. The notebook background is really quite simplistic and pretty cool, the drawing as well with with its simplistic tones of yellow going all around it, being broken up of course by the blue robes of the gnomes, and of course the gnomes running frantically towards the face of this person in black and white. It is really odd, but it just works. And yes, maybe when you look at it, this album cover does actually represent this album quite well, and it's the fact that both of them are weird, well, for the sake of being weird. But as a whole, this album really gets a very insignificant experience from me because I don't really remember anything good nor bad from this album and I'm very, as I said, most of this album quite indifferent towards it and thus it will be getting, you know, the stalest of all ratings, a 5 out of 10. But that's about it guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for tomorrow because we're going to be listening to Magma by the band Gojira. I of course want to thank my lovely supporters over on Patreon, so thank you so much to Clay Wallum, Rist of Kings and Lindsay Haycox, you guys are the best, and if any of you want to support me over on Patreon, you can find the link down in the description or in my about page. But that's about it guys, have a wonderful day and I'll catch you all tomorrow. Bye guys.